If you've got lower back pain or sciatica, you may well have been told that the muscle spasm in your lower back is causing your spine to be flat and it should be, and this is a problem. But what does this all mean? And is it even accurate? It's a very common finding after MRI or X-ray, and it confuses a lot of people, not least because the very exercises that you get told to do are things like child's pose and knee hugs, which actually make that straightening worse. So in today's video, we're gonna break this down so you can understand once and for all what this means, what's actually causing the straightening, so you can go about fixing it. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Michael Fatika, the lead osteopath and spine specialist here at Back in Shape. And we help people around the UK and all over the world fix their back pain and get back in shape for the long term. And today's video, our aim is to provide you that final clarity with regards to what is actually going on Yes, it might well be straighter, and now you're going to understand why and what to do about it. Now, the first place to start, just to help you understand what we're actually looking at, is going to be actually looking at the spine here. And what we've got is we've got the vertebral blocks. These make up the lumbar spine, the ones that are in green. We've got the sacrum down at the bottom, which is the orange section. And this is obviously your pelvis, where all your hip muscles attach, etc. And when we're looking at the spine here for some of these demonstrations that I'll talk about in a moment, the back part of the spine is here. Your bum is about here and your waistband of your trousers will sit around about here on the spine. So this is that kind of low back, small of the back area that we're going to be talking about. In practically all cases, of lower back pain. Whether we're talking about herniated or bulging discs, slippages, we're talking about misalignments, we're talking about uh, facet joint injuries, stenosis, etc. You are going to get a degree of muscle spasm, muscle symptoms associated with this. And it's very common that you're going to get some degree of discomfort or pain in this area in the lower back. Some of you will experience more sciatic type symptoms without any back pain. Your symptoms are in the glutes, they're maybe down in the hamstrings and the back of the leg as well. But commonly, these muscles are going to be tightening up because of the injury down here. Now, if we drill into what different muscles do, you get that tightness around here, right? These are the muscles that are supposedly tight in spasm, causing that flattening of the lumbar spine. Well, if we understand what flattening means, that means this lordosis, this natural backward bending curve, is flatter than it should be. We now have a flatness to the lumbar spine here. The muscles on the back where you are experiencing the pain are extensor muscles. That means they extend the spine. The very function of these muscles is to increase and backward bend the spine. This means that those muscles play a role in actually increasing the curvature of the lumbar spine and not flattening it. And therein lies the absolutely massive issue that you get told from that MRI or X-ray, your spine is flatter because of the muscle spasm here in the lower back, which really quite frankly demonstrates a significant underappreciation for the actual structure and function of the spine and its surrounding muscles. So what muscles actually do flex the lumbar spine. It's your rectus abdominis, but specifically the six pack of muscles that runs from the bottom of the rib cage here down to this pubic symphysis. And as these muscles contract, your spine flattens. So to recap, if someone's got that MRI or x-ray report and they're telling you that we've got this herniated disc or whatever it may be that is causing your back pain or sciatica, and that we've got a flattening of the lumbar spine that is caused by muscle spasm in the back, we have a real problem. I would probably disregard what they're saying because they are demonstrating that poor understanding for the lumbar spine. Now, for some of you, you're going to be in a lot of pain. You're hunched over, you're bent over, trying to avoid the pain that you're experiencing in what's called an antalgic posture, a pain-avoiding posture. And in that scenario, you will be bent forwards, possibly using your abs, and stood in a way that is obviously not ideal. But chances are, when these sorts of things are made, these comments are made about the straining of the lumbar spine, you will actually have been stood upright or maybe led down flat in the MRI chamber. And so generally speaking, if we know that the patient has had an x-ray standing and they've been doubled over, you generally won't make the statement that it's caused by muscle spasm, although sometimes, unfortunately, they still do. If, however, you are standing upright on that x-ray or lying down on an MRI relatively flat and we still observe a measurable flattening of the lumbar lordosis, we need to understand what is actually causing that. To help you understand what actually causes the straightening of the lumbar spine, it's first important to understand that we must evaluate this in a standing upright position. Because for the vast majority of us, standing upright, we're going to have a neutral normal lumbar spine, which means we have a lower back that has a lordosis, a backward bending curve in it, and that curve is measurable. And over the years, we've measured literally thousands of lumbar spines independently had the x-rays taken and measured them. And in some cases, we've had re-evaluations done, or in many cases, we've had re-evaluations done, and they've also been done independently. And the reason I say that is this is an 
us positioning patients in a particular position. It's a case of that's being done outside of the clinic by a third party to really ensure reliability of measurement. Now, the rate of curve or lack thereof is maintained in the lumbar spine and in the other areas of the spine too by the ligaments of the spine. And this to a certain degree includes the tension differences in the front and back part of the disc. We have lots of ligaments that run. You don't see them on this model, but you can always Google ligaments of the spine and you'll find a bunch of images. But you can see all of the ligaments will attach between all of the bones on the back here and there are some on the front. That maintains the integrity or the shape of the lumbar spine, this imbalance between the length of the ligaments on the front and the back part of the spine. Understandably, when we have a natural curve, the distance from here, L1, down to S1 is going to be lesser than the distance from here, the top of L1 vertebral body, down to the front of the S1 vertebral body. Think of this like your Olympic running track on the bend, lane one being here and lane eight being over here. The distance is longer. Now, there are specific actions that we can take to change the length of these ligaments or the resting length so that we change the alignment. And we have experience doing this over the years. We've seen it work in practice, but it's not magic. It's not anything special that we did. It's just taking advantage of the simple features of ligament tissue. So when we place the ligaments under a sustained stretch, a sustained pull for periods of 15 to 20 minutes or longer, they undergo a process called creep. Now for all of our ligaments, we can move through a full range of motion in any direction and they will elastically spring and then come back again to allow for proper movement. If they didn't do that, we wouldn't be able to move. And you can even see this to a certain degree in the knee and the elbow and joints of the finger where we can get a little bit of lateral bending to the side because of the little bit of give that those collateral ligaments, in cases of the knee, will give us. And it's no different here in the lumbar spine. There is that pliability. You guys know this because you know that the spine can move in all sorts of different directions and the ligaments and their elasticity give it that freedom. But when we hold the stretch, they start to deform. And when we're doing that 15 to 20 minutes of stretch, holding that stretch on certain ligaments and not others, we start to change the balance in that spine. And doing this over a period of months will literally change the shape of the spine. We have some videos on the YouTube channel that actually show this before and after in patients, and it can be quite significant. And please note, this doesn't happen in shorter durations of holding. It has to be a constant stretch. If we're coming off the stretch during that 15, 20 minutes, it's not going to change anything. Now, with all that said, have a think about about an action that you might do putting a stretch through the lumbar spine for just 20 minutes a day for weeks, months, or years on end. It's sitting, sitting at a desk, the average adult spending 9.5 hours a day sitting every single day. Do you reckon you're doing a lot of that? Just sinking, focusing on what you're doing on the computer, maybe programming something, maybe doing, you know, lengthy emails or articles or whatever the case may be, managing trades in the case of those of you that are trading, or simply just organizing your business or your occupation from that computer. They are everywhere and we spend a lot of time on them day in, day out over the years. And this means steadily the spine can change shape one way or another. It's plastic. It adapts to the way in which we use it. The problem is that when we couple that spine that's maybe been injured and now has this flattening to it, we do see that there are disadvantages that come with it. Maybe that's one of the things that we see in those that have long-standing lower back pain and disc herniations, particularly L5S1 or L45, that just don't seem to be getting better. But how does this all affect the muscles? Well, think about it. Going back to that Olympic track earlier, we've gone from lane one to maybe lane four, lane five. Now we have a stretch through the muscles. And what do you feel if you do a hamstring stretch or any kind of stretch and you hold it there for minutes on end, maybe even longer than that, what do you feel in the muscle? You feel tension. So it's no wonder, not only have we got the signals going to those muscles from the actual injury site, maybe L45, L5S1, but we also have a mechanical elongation of those muscles that is baked in through the very actions that we're doing every day. Now, when you're feeling that strong tension in the hamstring stretch, as you're stretching it out, do you stretch further or do you ease off? And this is the big difference, which we'll get to a little bit later on. But all too often, you guys are told you've got a flattening of the lumbar spine. Go and do knee hugs to ease the muscle tension. Go and do child's pose to ease the muscle tension. And it's only serving to do even more of the very thing that is the root cause of changing your lumbar spine. One of the very important things that we want to give you in this video is an actual strategy to relieve some of the tension that's there in the lower back. And that is going to be the towel exercise. One of the reasons that it is such a great stretch, and there are videos we link down in the description where you can follow along with specific demonstrations of how to do this. But the towel stretch involves placing a little towel rolled up underneath this lumbar spine here to support the natural curve, restore the natural curve, take the pressure off these discs, take the pressure off those muscles, give them that respite that they need, and also interrupt that constant barrage of stretching 
stretching that's taking place through this lumbar spine as we're slouching and sitting all day. And granted, you're going to have to make some changes as well to the way in which you do things on a daily basis once you know this. Now, full transparency, the towel stretch, we typically recommend doing it for two to five minutes. You can start out with as little as 20 seconds for those of you that have a particularly long history of chronic or maybe even you're struggling and you're a bit more acute right now, you're going to start out with a shorter duration. But this is not going to change the lumbar spine. It's only going to help you uh, stave off the worsening of this situation and start to actually provide a little bit of relief for that lower back. If you're going to make any changes to the lumbar spine, you need to realistically have a starting point. You need to understand where precisely you are with numbers and that should be measured on whatever imaging you've got done in the standing position so that it can be remeasured later on or evaluated effectively to know that we've actually done something effective. Otherwise, if we're just starting doing 20 minute protocols of trying to stretch and increase the curve in our lower back, we don't know where we started. We don't know how long we're going to be doing it for and we don't know where we're going to be at the end or even if it worked or is at the right level of the lumbar spine. These are all important distinctions if we're going to start changing things. You have to know objectively that we were 57.2% reduced in the lumbar curve in a standing position and now we're only 25.3%. Those kind of numbers need to be done. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time and could be creating more problems than you've started out with. And also bear in mind that most people will not have a significant straightening of the lumbar spine. It will be marginally reduced one way or another. There is an ideal, yes, for the lumbar spine, but there is also quite a large range that most human beings with a spine will fall into. Now, for those of you that have had it for a longer period of time and you've been really struggling with the recovery of that herniated disc or that challenge in the lower back, then maybe there's a reason that it hasn't been recovering or there's extra forces at play that are causing that back to struggle and the flattening of the lumbar spine could be one of those. But that's perhaps for another video and we've covered it many times on other episodes of the podcast. So check those out if you need any more help with that. The frustrating thing about this issue for many of you watching this is you'll have been told to do the wrong sort of exercises over and over again and you're wondering why things don't get better. Simply put, the lumbar spine has an ideal position that it's best weight bearing in. And when we start to change it away from normal, we get into a little bit of trouble. We put the spine in an ever more disadvantaged position for load bearing and activity, all the daily activities that you're doing. And it can just really make recovering from back pain with any lasting way difficult. Now we've touched on the towel exercise, which is an absolutely fantastic one. That's going to relieve strain in the back, but you ultimately need to do proper rehabilitative work to restore strength and control for that lumbar spine. And you need to also make some modifications to your daily activities. A lot of the time that we're getting these sorts of questions it's the IT consultant it's the programmer it's the trader that has these comments of a flattened lumbar lordosis and for you guys where you're sitting for hours and hours every day unavoidably so you need to start to try and change your setup you need to use things like a standing desk changing position even just being fidgety on your chair a little bit more disrupts that constant stretch process that leads to the creep ultimately if you do all these things right and you start to rebuild strength and resilience into your lower back and modify what you're doing on a daily basis you're going to find you get better you get larger lasting results and you find you can do things again that you currently can't do without significant pain. If you need any more help with exactly what you need to do, a program or support to help you recover from back pain for the long term, whether it's back pain specifically or back pain and sciatica or sciatica on its own, then do reach out to us at backincheckprogram.com and check out the program and the membership because that is exactly what you will need to help you recover from this with a structure that has all the support baked in. As always, if you made it this far through the video, hopefully you found it helpful. If you know someone else that could benefit from hearing this message and understanding their spine a little bit better, then consider sharing it with them. And thank you for making it this far. We'll see you in the next one.